na Tajvanu, známém také jako Formóza. They make excuse all the time to try to catch you back. They don't want to lose any of you. The Maya system never want to lose anyone. So imagine if the whole world is gone, then what, whom can he control? Who would he have fun to torture, to punish, and to trick, and to make trouble? And nobody will entertain them with their punishment, with their uh, suffering kind of system, hmm? they don't want that. Therefore, if you are a meditation practitioner in the Kuan Yin Method, okay, I'm talking about us only. I can't just take care of every other kind of method. I'm talking about us only so that you know, because it's, it's no use talking about somebody else, right? All you need is just about us, yeah, about yourself. So for you yourself, if you want to really be away from Maya, then you must keep the five precepts. Don't tell lies, also meaning you don't gossip, because gossiping is not always true. You just hear somebody say that, or even if you see something, or you hear something personally, you might not hear it right. Yeah, in their college, they experience that, you know? The first person, you know, in the university, one person say one word, up to the 50, it's a different word. Sometimes you talk even to your wife, your kids, your father, mother, they don't understand you, yeah? In my practice, I always have to do this. I say something, blah, 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 and then I say, repeat. <laughs> repeat to me what you heard. And sometimes they repeat differently, three times, until I really <laughs> had it. And it's okay, okay, go, I get somebody else. <laughs> really, it's like that. Sometimes you see something, but it's not the same. And uh, many people also told me that, uh, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, he married again, and etc., etc. I said, no matter what he did, he, he was a prophet, yeah? Peace be upon him, he did what he has to do. It's maybe it's their karma that made him have to do that. Maybe he has to sacrifice for that. Maybe that's the way he has to go through. That's the price he has to pay. So there's no need, if you believe in the Master, the teaching is good, you have good experience in heaven, then you just follow that master. Do not let your mind cheat you. Do not let your eyes delude you. Do not let your ears confuse you. That's why we don't use the ears to, to meditate. That's why we don't use the eyes to meditate. We don't use anything at all. <laughs> we just contact direct inside. Anything that rely on the outside, it's perishable, it's changeable. Huh? Some they have, some they don't have, yeah? Even if you use your mind, what if you are in an unconscious situation where your mind cannot control? And if you use breathing, for example, well, that, that may be helping, but what if you are not breathing anymore in that state, you know, like in coma or something, that people keep you in with the artificial breathing? What then? who meditate for you, okay? So only your soul inside meditate, not your body. Therefore, even when you meditate, you see you're gone away from your body, you see your body sitting there, but you go to heaven. It's a, just an example. So who is it that meditating while your soul gone out? It is yourself, your true original self. There are some yogis, they don't even breathe. Yeah, they practice 
to control their breathing so they don't even breathe anymore for sometimes very, very long time, many weeks or months even, depends on how long he practiced. So if we rely on any external things, uh, bodily help, we don't get anywhere. That's why the Buddha said, if you rely on forms, if you rely on sound, if you rely on uh, visual, visual faculty, for example, huh? then you never get to see the Buddha. What he means is the Buddha nature. Yeah? That's why he even say, I am the finger who points to the moon, but the finger is not the moon. If the Buddha's finger is not the goal, not the real thing, uh, what about us, this uh, you know, mortal, lowly level body? So we use nothing. That's why. And one of the Zen masters say what? Oh, now I know. It would have been better if I had been blind, deaf, in the beginning. Blind, deaf, and dumb even, in the beginning. That's what he said. Because these things don't help us with anything. Let's just make more trouble. See a nice woman. Oh, want to, <laughs> want to see more. Yeah? And we're more than seeing. And then see a nice, good-looking man. Oh, look at that muscle, my God. <laughs> yeah, for example, huh? Uh, see beautiful things, one this, one that. Nice house, nice car. How long will you keep them? Hmm? Everything is temporary, yeah? We can enjoy them, use them, okay, just like at home you watch some movies, yeah? Or you play toys with the children, because they are toys, they're children. When you play with the children, you don't say, eh, I'm adult, I don't play with this, these are just toys, plastic. No, you don't do that, of course. So the saints and sages, they came to us in this world, they play with us. Yeah, they do what we do, so that we can feel closer, intimate relationship, and not feeling that, like, oh, he's up there, you know, and I'm just here, I'm sinful, I'm lowly, I'm just a mortal, ignorant, I can never be liberated, I can never be anything more than just my ignorant self. So any master who came from higher level, they hide everything. They just look like ordinary people, they even get married, have children, and whatever they do, they got a job, yeah? They make money to take care of their family, everybody, the same. But they are not the same. Therefore, I told the Muslim, don't criticize the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Do not criticize anything, because you don't understand anything. <laughs> not yet. If you do understand, you wouldn't have asked that question to begin with. For example, like that. In some of the teaching of some masters, uh, one master say to the Muslim, if your master, your master is God, your master is number one. If you, you know your master is really a real master, then even he, if he tell you to dip your prayer mat in the wine, you do it. For the Muslim, the prayer mat is very holy, sacred, personal. And wine is a no-no. Ah. So he said to such extreme, to advise the doubtful disciple of Muslim that if your master tell you to dip your prayer mat in the wine, you do it. This is the advice for absolute faith and devotion. Only if we have that absolute faith and devotion, then we can really understand the Master, and we reach higher levels, return to our glorious, great, original Self. Otherwise, we are so deluded here. We think everything is us, the ego is us, <laughs> the house is mine, the car is mine, oh, that's all we know. But these are not permanent anyway, even if the car is yours, how long will you keep it? The best car will last maybe for 30 years, hmm? or 40, 50, and then 
Some car last not even three years, <laughs> four years. <laughs> it depends on what car. Yeah. We all know that, but we, for us, very difficult to remember. Every day we catch up with things. You know, we're caught in in the maze of of the world, working. You know, family, competition at job. And, oh, this is a very pitiful situation. But we have to. What else can we do? Hmm? That is the karma that the master cannot erase, and can maybe reduce a little bit, but cannot. You know why? If I take away all that karma, you're gone. <laughs> you die, okay? Yeah. But you still have affinity with the world, with your family members, with the, you know, the boss, whatever job you do. Because of that, master has to leave it the present fixed karma. He can be reduced, can make it smoother, you know, like you die in a dream, you lose your leg, your arm in a dream, but you don't lose it in reality, that's all. Okay? For example, like that. Otherwise, if you have no more karma, you cannot be here. The same, the master has to borrow karma to stay. Yeah. <laughs> that's what, the master came without, without any karma. But the master doesn't need it. Disciple will be happily lending a lot <laughs> with no interest. <laughs> Any time. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy that you understand. I'm proud of you if you understand. If you do not understand, then you will slowly, okay? In the classroom, there are always different students. Some understand quickly. Some are top of the class, top ten. Some are lower than top ten. But they will be okay. They'll be okay, yes. As long as they stay in the class and try their best, they will be co-educated. <laughs> and they will get maybe a certificate so that they can get a good job outside. Maybe not the top job, but some job. So they can earn money, take care of themselves, and take care of family, yeah? At least when they go out, they say, yeah, I graduated high school, okay? Yeah, and uh, what grade? <coughs> I, <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Maybe not intelligent enough to remember. <laughs> but still, I was in high school, right? Yes, for that you will be accounted for, hmm? for the higher uh, dimension. Just like the story, a Hindu story, one guy, he was having karma, he did not have any master. But one day somehow he happened to see the master, and then the master told him he's going to die. <laughs> what good news. He said, but if you go up there uh, and the... Uh, the karma council asks you, you still have a little bit of good merit because you helped me today a little bit. So if the council karma asks you, you want to enjoy your good deed uh, karma first or you want to pay the bad karma first, you say, I want the good deed first. Okay, so the, the, the guy remember that. When he died in heaven, uh, some council karma asked him and he said, I want the good deed karma first. And then because of that, he has been able to go into a soccer class in heaven, see that master again, listen to his discourse, earn more good karma, and then <laughs> go up and up and up. Just one time even. Yeah. And you have seen your master maybe a lot. <laughs> you have listened to a lot of good discourse, and you have helped the world, help master to help the world. I'm sure you will not be cast lower than heavens. Okay? Remember. Yeah. Wherever you go, remember your master. Okay? Yeah. Maybe your master is not the top one, but I don't know who else to recommend to you. <laughs> so you stick with me for now. <laughs> if you find some better, please tell me. <laughs> so we can be rescued together. <laughs>
in case you do fine, okay? Don't hide it from your poor master, okay, huh? Yeah, at least I taught you something, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> if you find something better, you must tell me. Remember me, okay? <laughs> All right then. <laughs> now, I'm going. <laughs> I'm going back to work, okay? Maybe from tomorrow I have to be in retreat for a while, yeah? But you stay here, be in retreat with me, okay? If I can, I come out. If I cannot, then you're also in retreat with me. Understand that? I have to, I have to. But before retreat, I had to work a lot, you know, to, to prepare for when I'm not there. And when I come back, <laughs> I catch up a lot also. So I have to go back, do some more work. I worked a lot last night already, but, you know, I had to do some meditation afterward. Then because you're going today, some of you and my relatives are going, I came now and have a look. Okay, uh, no matter what, I, I'm right next to you, okay, nearby. Physically, I mean, okay? All right. Thank you.